We're taking almost 30 straight fairway drivers out to a field to find out which one is the straightest. But what makes a straight fairway driver so important? Hey everyone, it's Greg from Six Sided Discs. Many players agree that the hardest shot to throw in disc golf is a straight shot. And the faster the disc is, the harder that shot becomes. When we explored straight mid-ranges for the first time, we talked about how important a straight mid-range is because it perfectly blends distance and control. But sometimes, a mid-range just doesn't fly far enough. Fairway drivers fill an important gap between more controllable mid-ranges and faster but less controllable distance drivers. Discraft is one of the top manufacturers in disc golf. With a sponsored team full of world and US champions, they've been producing disc golf discs and frisbees since the late 1970s. And despite their huge list of approved discs, even six-time world champion Paul Macbeth admitted that there's gaps in their lineup when they were introducing the sixth disc in his line, the Athena. Now, the Athena was meant to offer Discraft fans something similar to the flight of a T-Bird, a seven-speed driver with moderate overstability. One year later, Discraft is looking to fill another hole in their fairway lineup with the Cicada. The Cicada is a seven-speed straight fairway driver with six glide, negative one turn, and one fade. For years now, if you wanted to throw a straight fairway driver type shot and you were a Discraft sponsored player or you just preferred Discraft, you were probably throwing one of two things. The Undertaker, rated at 9.5, negative one two, or a Buzz, rated at 5.4, negative one one. Now, the Buzz does fly pretty far for a mid-range, but not everyone can get big distance from it. Similarly, The Undertaker isn't super straight right off the shelf. You usually have to beat it in a little bit first. Discraft does have other options though, such as the Passion at 8.5, negative 1.1, and also the Mantis at 8.4, negative 2.2. But we'll find out later why the Passion and the Mantis have failed to really solidify themselves as the go-to straight fairway from Discraft. So it looks like the Cicada will be filling an important gap for Discraft allowing them to better compete with top-selling fairway drivers like the Axiom Crave, the Latitude 64 River, or Discmania FD. But the question is, how does the Cicada compare to these supposedly straight fairway drivers, and which ones are actually the straightest? To find out, we're going to throw and rate over 25 different straight fairway drivers. And since flight numbers don't matter, we'll find out just which of those flight numbers are actually accurate. First though, how are we determining whether these discs are straight? Well, for us, it's about how long a disc can maintain a straight flight, or at least a flight with minimal turn and minimal fade. Now, of course, at low speed, just about any disc will fade left, but it's about resisting that fade for as long as possible. As usual, we'll have Team Six Sided Discs' Caleb Thomas throwing for us today. We're in central Ohio and the course conditions are perfect. 75 degrees, 43% humidity. With wind out of the southeast, no more than 5 to 10 miles an hour, central Ohio is at about 800 feet of elevation. And let's kick things off right out of the gate with Discraft's go-to fairway driver, The Undertaker. Rated at 9.5, negative 1.2, just how straight is it? Well, today's Undertaker is fairly straight. This is an ESP Undertaker out of Caleb's bag, and it's already slightly beat in. But worry not, because if a brand new ESP Undertaker is too flippy or too understable for you, Discraft have a ton of plastic options available. And typically, the stability changes from one of their plastics to another. So you can easily switch to Z, Big Z, ESP, or some specialty run of plastic to find the stability that's right for you. For now though, we're saying the Undertaker is just a little too overstable. Next up, let's take a look at the first of a few discs we'll see from Lone Star Discs today, the Guadalupe. With flight numbers of 7.6, negative 2.2, its shape isn't far off of a Discraft Passion, but the Guadalupe just doesn't quite have enough stability to hold straight. Every time it started to turn, it never stopped. So the Guadalupe is great for big turnovers, but not so great for straight shots. Moving on to another negative 2-2 disc, we have the Latitude 64 Fury. Rated at 9-6, negative 2-2, the Fury is a close relative of the Latitude 64 River, or Saint. With a big dome and aerodynamic shape, it looks like it'll get lots of glide. But does lots of glide mean straight? 
not in this case. The Fury was one of the most understable discs we threw all day. Next, let's move on to another disc that Latitude 64 makes, except they make it for Discmania. The Essence is part of Discmania's Evolution line, rated at 8.6, negative 2.1. Some Discmania pros use the Essence as a roller, but I have heard of people throwing it as a straight disc. So, how does it fly for Caleb? Well, not straight at all. The Essence is definitely understable, but maybe for lower arm speeds, there's a chance it could be the right straight disc for you. The Essence will fit right in next to the Fury in our understable section. And we'll move on to the Clash Discs Soda, or depending on where you live, Pop or Cola. The Soda is rated at 75 negative 22. And the first and most notable difference between it and frankly any other disc we test today is that the Soda is unbelievably shallow. When you initially get the Soda in your hand, it could almost be a bit surprising or shocking how shallow that rim feels. And that may be a potential turnoff for some players, but in terms of flight, the Soda definitely has straight potential. I think for now, it would be safe to put the Soda in the straight category. Now for our first disc from Innova and continuing with our batch of negative two turn discs, we have the Valkyrie. At 9.4, negative 2.2, it is once again expected to get a little bit of movement right and left. Ours, though, is in Champion Glow Plastic. And frankly, that makes this Valkyrie pretty overstable. Now, just like I mentioned for Discraft fans, Innova fans are in pretty good shape when it comes to plastics. Because the stability is so different from Champion Glow and Halo, to plastics like Champion, Star, G-Star, or even DX, there's bound to be a Valkyrie that's gonna fly just right for you. Unfortunately, you might have to purchase three or four before you find out. Next, let's go back to Discraft with the Passion. The Passion is an interesting disc with a curved rim and what feels like a bead out on the edge of the wing. It is unconventional, but it is that unconventional shape that makes the Passion a bit of a love it or hate it kind of disc. Today, we're throwing a Z Swirl Passion, and it's tricky. It can be pretty straight, but it can also be pretty overstable. Angle control seems to be really important for the Passion, but instead of plastic options, this time we have weight options. The Passion and ESP Plastic is available anywhere from around 176 grams all the way down to the low 150s, meaning there's probably a Passion out there for anyone so long as you like the shape of the rim. I think it's safe to say that the Passion is a straight flyer, but it's definitely not one of the straightest ones that we tested. All right, back to Innova now for the next few discs. And up first is the TL. According to Innova's website, the L in TL stands for less overstable, as in specifically a less overstable T-Bird. So does that lesser overstability translate to straight? Well, not if you throw with much power. But like we mentioned earlier, because Innova has so many plastics, if you like the shape and feel of the TL, there's bound to be one that'll work for you. Alternatively, if you don't like the shape of the TL, you could go with another one of Innova's fairway drivers, the Hawkeye. With flight numbers of 75, negative 11, it's one of Innova's newest fairway drivers. And as you can see here, it is also the straightest. The Hawkeye is easily one of the straightest discs we tested all day. Following close behind it is another end of a fairway driver, the Dark Rebel, aka the Fairway Disc. Or in other words, Innova's version of the Discmania FD that they used to make for Discmania. At 7.6, negative 1.1, it isn't far off the Hawkeye in numbers, nor is it in flight. The Dark Rebel is also one of the straightest discs we tested today. So Innova had a couple great contenders for the straightest fairway driver, but now let's move from one of the biggest manufacturers to one of the smallest. AGL, or Above Ground Level Discs, is a newer brand manufactured by Gateway Disc Sports. And their Sycamore is a 7.5 negative 1.1 fairway driver. In our testing, we found the Sycamore to be not particularly straight at all. In fact, it was really understable. 
Now the Sycamore is straight for someone, perhaps beginners or slower arm speeds, but for Caleb, who's throwing with plenty of power and torque, the Sycamore just can't hold up. Next up, the Axiom Insanity. We have two different Insanities to test today, the Cosmic Neutron as well as Eclipse. Now the Insanity in either plastic absolutely has the potential to be a straight disc. While James Conrad uses the Insanity as a roller, there are so many plastic options and weight options from MVP that most amateur players will be able to find an Insanity that's right for them. We'll drop the Insanity in our straight section and move on now to the Castaplast Falk. The Falk is a 9.5 negative 2.1 fairway driver that is the understable complement to the Castaplast Lots. Now I've thrown the Castaplast Lots many times and I would compare it very closely to the Discraft Undertaker, both in flight numbers and in actual flight. But what that means is that the Lots is really only going to be straight if you beat it in. The Falk though might be a contender for a straight disc right off the shelf or not. The Falk was just incredibly understable for us on every single shot. So we're just not going to be able to put that in the straight section. Next up, we move on to one of our two 10 speed discs, the finish line era. Now, whether or not you believe 10 speeds are fairway drivers, I'll leave that to you. Some manufacturers consider a 10 speed of fairway, while others consider nine speeds distance drivers. Finish line discs are designed by Drew Gibson and manufactured here in the United States. The Era is a 10.5, negative 1, 1.5 fairway driver and is one of only two 10 speeds that we'll be testing today. In our testing, we can only conclude that the Era must only be straight for someone with Drew Gibson's power because mere mortals are only going to see the Era fade. From our first 10 speed to our only other one, Let's take a look at the DGA Undertow. At 10.4, negative 1.1, it sounds like the perfect moderate distance straight shooter. But just like the Era, the Undertow sacrifices too much control with that added speed, and it just ends up overstable. So back into the territory of traditional fairway drivers, let's take a look at the Thought Space Athletics Mantra. We have the Mantra in Aura Plastic, which is the Thought Space equivalent to MVP's Neutron Plastic. And at 9.6, negative 2.1, it sounds like a sound option for a straight-ish fairway driver. However, for us, it's just too understable. And that is not going to cut it for a straight fairway driver. Next, we're back with Discraft again, this time for the Z Mantis. The Mantis is rated at 8.4, negative 2.2, and it's another disc with a ton of potential, but a similar story to the Discraft Passion. If you get the angle or power just right, the Mantis can be a super straight flyer, but it is very, very touchy. If the Mantis gets any turn at all, it's just going to keep turning and turning and turning. And that lack of controllability is a little bit of a concern. So we're going to put that in our understable section. Back to Innova again with the Halo Leopard 3. Rated at 7.5, negative 2.1, the Halo Star Leopard 3 is certain to be more overstable than those flight numbers. And indeed it was for us. But once again, this is a situation where the plastic plays a vital role. In Champion, Star, G-Star, or DX, a Leopard 3 could be a super straight disc. So if you like the feel of a Leopard 3, find another plastic and see if that one works for you. For us, we're going to say our Leopard 3 was just a little too overstable. Next up, the Dynamic Discs Vandal in Lucid Plastic. The Vandal is a 9.5, negative 1.52 fairway driver. And compared to some that we've tested, it does at least have a little bit of fade after it turns. But it's still just a little too understable to make our straight list today. When I'm looking at these flights and I'm trying to evaluate whether I think it's straight, I try to imagine this sort of narrow line of trees down the fairway. And if this disc is moving a whole bunch left to right, it's going to hit those trees and it's not going to have a straight flight when everything's said and done. Next, on to another trilogy disc with the Westside Stag. 
With flight numbers of 8, 6, negative 1, 2, I was expecting the stag to be similar to the Undertaker, for example, maybe flipping flat or drifting just slightly before a generous fade. But I was wrong. So, so wrong. The stag was just crazy understable and so far off of the numbers that we were expecting. So the stag is going to go in our understable section and... That's that. Next, we have one of our biggest contenders, the Axiom Crave. We'll be testing the Crave in a couple different plastics today, Proton, Plasma, and Neutron. And I could talk all day about the little differences and nuances of the plastic, but frankly, you just need to see the Crave fly. Holding straight for well over two thirds of its flight time and again, the Crave has a very late but reliable fade. You could beat it in a little bit to get rid of some of that fade at the end of the flight and is one of the most reliably straight fairway drivers around. So the Crave may have been a bit of a sure thing, but this next disc is far from it. We have the Lone Star Frio. Lone Star has been feeling the heat online recently with many people on Reddit complaining about the quality of their discs. Most Lone Star discs that we've tested have actually been quite overstable, whether they said they were going to be or not. So is there any hope for the Frio? Uh, yes. The Frio is rated at 75 negative 11 and it is every bit of that and more. The Frio could very well be one of the straightest discs that we tested all day. From the Frio then, on to another Lone Star disc, the Lariat. By flight numbers, it looks to be a faster Frio at 9.5, negative 1, 1. But where the Frio blew us away with how straight it was, the Lariat blows its chances and reverts back to this theme that we've seen from Lone Star of discs just being really, really overstable. Next is the Mint Discs Jackalope, and it has a lot in common with the Lariat. It's from a Texas-based company, and it's also orange. Okay, that's actually all it has in common with the Lariat, because the Jackalope is rated at 85 negative 21, and it is actually way more understable than that. The Jackalope is just too understable to be considered a straight fairway driver. Moving on now to the Millennium JLS. And this is a funny one because the JLS is made for Millennium by Innova. And Innova also makes a whole bunch of straight fairway drivers. They made the FD for Discmania, the Hawkeye, the Dark Rebel, the list goes on. So exactly what molds are Innova using to make the JLS? Well, rumor has it online that it is a T-Bird top with a Whippet bottom. What does that actually give you? Well, it gives you a really touchy disc because if you put too much hyzer on it, it holds that hyzer. And if you let it turn too much, it doesn't come back. And frankly, a straight disc needs to be able to do something in between. So the JLS for us was probably a little bit understable. It's definitely not going in the straight section. While Innova may no longer be making Discmania's old FD, they are making their own new FD but so are Discmania. Well, we have Discmania's FD in both C-Line and S-Line plastic, so let's take a look at both. And for the C-Line FD, it is the same story as the C-Line DD3, the C-Line MD3, P2, PD, whatever. Every single disc made out of C-Line plastic for Discmania is insanely overstable beefcake all day long. Forget the flight numbers, at 7601, the C-Line might as well be a Firebird. But as we know from testing the S-Line versions of the DD3 and the PD and many others, Discmania's new S-Line plastic is actually usable for regular humans, like us. In fact, the Ella Hansen Showstopper S-Line FD is super straight. Maybe power throwers can get something out of Discmania's C-Line FD, but for the rest of us, we'll stick with the S-Line. Just two discs left on our journey, and they both hold high hopes for straight fairway fans everywhere. First up, the Latitude 64 River. 
The Latitude 64 River is rated at 77 negative 11 and is one of the most frequently recommended discs to newer players looking for a straight disc. And in our experience, the people making those recommendations are definitely not wrong. In fact, they are exactly right. The river is probably best though for lower arm speeds, because if you power up on it, it just doesn't quite have that integrity to fight back. And that leaves us right back where we started with the Discraft Cicada. At 76 negative 11, it shares the same appealing flight numbers as the River or Crave or Frio, but how does it compare? Well, good news, Discraft fans. Not only is the Cicada straight, but it possesses a trait that few discs have, late turn. It's one thing for a disc to get turn at high speeds when you really rip on it. For the most part, any disc can do that, but to get late turn is really impressive. And with Discraft likely to put the Cicada into production in all of their many different plastics, there's bound to be a Cicada for you. This Cicada though that we tested today is the Test Flight Cicada. So we can only hope that they haven't changed much for the first run Cicada that releases Friday, October 6th at SixSidedDiscs.com or at your local retailer. So the Cicada joins an esteemed group of straight fairway drivers with the Axiom Crave, the Discmania S-Line FD, the Lone Star Frio, the End of a Dark Rebel, and the End of a Hawkeye as some of the straightest fairway drivers we could find. You can find these fairway drivers we tested today as well as many others at SixSidedDiscs.com or at the link in the video description. Comment below your favorite straight fairway driver or the one from this video you're most interested in trying. Now these flight numbers don't matter videos are a lot of fun to make, but they are a lot of work. Hours of throwing, filming, comparing, testing, writing, and editing goes into each one. If you're enjoying this series or anything else we do here at Six Sided Discs, please consider supporting us by picking up your next disc at SixSidedDiscs.com or by supporting us on Patreon. All three tiers get discounts on our website as well as at our local pop-up shops. For Six Sided Discs, I'm Greg. We'll see you in the next one. Well, you know what the bin means. It's flight numbers don't matter time. The Cicada is a seven speed straight. <coughs> oh gosh. Allowing them to better compete with top selling. With nine speed and seven glide, the Fury is part of Latitude's somewhat control. Lone Star has been feeling a bit of the heat of the Okay, cool. I think we're done. Oh, bye. If you like this content and want to see more, please consider liking the video, subscribing to our channel, or supporting us on Patreon. Your support makes this content possible. Wow. <laughs>